So uh, I just picked up this router jig up at Eden Saw and uh, just made the little cut here. This is going to be the uh, jig that actually sets the piece of wood into it here so is that we can make the curve of the front of the cabinet and really happy with how that thing cut through. I mean, that just made a perfect cut. This is the first time I've used one of these router jigs. Really super simple. This one is from Rockler. Now I did have to modify it. I mean, you can see the bolt isn't, or the, excuse me, the bit isn't perfectly centered in there. I had to drill two holes in it to make this one work, but I just drilled the holes. And then uh, where is it over here? I got this little uh, taper bit and then uh, just uh, tapered the holes, just chamfered those holes in, and it was able to take the taper head screws that came with it and mounted the router up nice. So pretty happy with how that worked. We got this cut out, now I just need to make a second one. That worked really slick. I just went in uh, with the Makita jigsaw here and uh, just zipped on up the lines that I scribed and uh, everything came out real nice and I hit it with the hand sander here. And uh, this transition here is nice and smooth now. Everything rounds up really nice. And so this should be the perfect length of that cabinet face. 7.25 inches from here to here is that cabinet face. And then it's a 7.75 inch radius that comes up here. And then there's a one inch back block over here. And that's what takes the thing around the final distance on the countertop. So all that should line up pretty good. All right, we got the uh, second uh, router cut made. A real nice radius there. Everything just came right in the lines with where I was wanting. So super happy with that. Now I will mention on this router, it does have this three plunge setting here. And that's what I used to go down through. You just take this thing and you adjust it to the height. And then this rod here comes down, makes contact. You set it by turning this here. And then it comes down, makes contact here. You set it on the top one first. You set your depth of cut and then you spin it uh, every time you make the next cut. And so I'm actually cutting this in three passes and uh, it's left a really nice finish on there. I mean, that, that's just a beautiful finish and you don't really see any lines from where the cut went through. So super pleased with how all that worked. Right, here we go, got these two pieces put together and I mean, they are almost completely perfect identical i'm super happy with that um you know i, I can't even f really fill i mean there's a little bit of a raise right there but i mean there's the tiny little hump right there that i'll take off with sanding other than that these things are a perfect copy of each other so that'll make each end of these things uh, the same this is uh, just a curve cut test piece i cut a little too low on the first one there and it's separated but going on down we uh Got the depth corrected on the rest of them, so the rest of them have stayed together. So I'm pretty happy with how that's all looking. I'm feeling really good about it. When I press down, everything will press in and fit real nice and tight in there. It gives a nice curved radius to it. And so that's what we're going to be using to uh, build the cabinet door there. I just wanted to use a test piece before I went and started cutting up the nice piece. And so what will happen here is as we put this uh, down to this end, uh, the edge of the board that I'm cutting will actually wind up like this. We just go uh, um, seven and a quarter inches in, and then it starts the radius from there, and then it'll finish out on this end at the final radius it's supposed to have. This will go out at the ends, and I'm actually making that piece longer than it needs to be uh, so it can be cut to fit, and then I'll cut it to its final size and uh, really go in there and do a job of that. But this shows me that this will make that front radius no problem, and then the spaces in between, this will get filled with thickened epoxy, and that'll give this back its, its same structural rigidity. It won't be any different than what it was before. I just set this up on edge here. You can see it is springing back out of the form a little bit, but it'll actually get screwed in place. And we do the final layup on the final piece, but it does give a really nice radius to that. I mean, you can fill the, the high spots on there, so it will take just a little bit of sanding to get that perfect, but not super worried about that. It is going to get painted out. It will look good when it's all said and done. Just got to knock the high spots off a little bit, but as you can see, that final ply in there is super skinny well good morning it is the next day now and i am getting ready to dive back into the project as you can see you got stuff starting to set up over here we're going to go ahead and make the curve cuts today i've got to go ahead and get this laid out i'm not going to film while i'm doing this because i really need to concentrate on getting this right also as you can see from the color of the sky up here we may be getting some rain today i was hoping the sun was going to poke out it had poked out a little bit ago it did dry everything up just a little bit there's a whole lot of water on the ground in here as you can see and so everything's pretty damp out here today so i don't know if i'm gonna get cut off but i'm gonna rush i'm gonna try and get these uh, curves knocked out and marked up and cut and get some epoxy on this thing i will film some along the way but i'm probably not going to get a whole lot of filming today but i'll definitely try and keep you guys up on what's going on all right, we are making progress here. I've got several of the cuts made. This uh, little Makita skill saw I've got is just working out fantastically. 
So feeling really good about how this is working. I mean, everything is just uh, bending on up for me, giving me that nice tight radius. Um, the depth of cut seems to be really good, so we're just going to keep on trucking on this. I'm just clamping the straight edge down here, using that as a guide. I made all my marks an inch and a half um, out from where they needed to be. So what that did is it allowed me to, uh, by the time that this comes over, the last cut will be seven and a quarter from this end. So that should work out perfectly. So hoping to see that kind of come to fruition here. Right, and here we are. We got all the curves made and I just took this and clamped it up right quick. It looks like everything's going to pull down in there. Uh, this is actually going to have to be clamped in. I will point out, I made this extra long, and the reason I made this extra long is I understood that uh, I was going to be doing a lot of clamping and work on the ends here. You see we got a little split out kind of starting at the end, but once that's epoxied up, I could just cut that off. So that's, that's not a problem right there. And so that'll work out just fine once I clamp all this in here. Um, and then any of the tooling marking from working on these ends, anything like that, it'll just get sliced down to the size that it needs to be, and it'll all fit in there. Because I think, I mean, I really only need about this much of this thing. I think I only need 34 inches, and it's almost four feet long, so that'll work out really well. Overall, I'm really happy with how this thing's looking here. I've it, it just seeing this come together, it's just fantastic. I've been thinking about this for so long. I've had like four years to really think about how I want to redo this head and it's just been the big thing on the boat and kind of seeing this piece come to light that's that's just fantastic and I, I can't wait to get this done get the door cut into it and get it installed so we're really doing good right now all right you can see we got the cuts made here and what I'm doing is going in marking out this is where the door is going to be and I just centered this in here so we can take a little bit off each end and that way anything on the end that gets screwed up from the clamping or maybe not enough epoxy in there um, what we're really concerned with is the center section of this. So I will be able to cut this down from each end to make it the right height, making sure it's square, everything else. And then obviously, well, it's actually this end here is the one that has to get contoured to the hull. And then this end here is the one that has to be uh, set up for the sink. And that also kind of lets me just kind of maneuver everything and fit it into place to make sure that everything is going to fit really well. And so pretty happy how this is looking. Now this last seam from this mark here, uh, to this mark here is not going to be filled with any epoxy and the reason for that is I'll actually have to bring it down to the two inch mark here but I will tape over this the whole way down and the reason being is that once this is done and fit and formed I'm going to go back in and I'm going to cut that seam with a utility knife from the other side and open it up and then we'll cut the corner radiuses that go in here and I'll cut across the top and that should make this piece pop out of here real nice and easy and uh, hopefully that'll uh, give me the minimum amount of jigsaw work to do so hopefully that works out incredibly well. Now I'm putting on the respirator because I'm fixing to be working with uh, the colloidal silica and uh, it's the uh, 406 uh, thickener that West Marine or West System sells. You always want to use a respirator when screwing around with this stuff because if it gets in your lungs that's really bad. So here we are, you can see that, I mean, that was five pumps of epoxy each time. And I did, when I was coming out of the smaller can, I did 10. So we've got, you know, what worked out to five pumps each time coming in there. And so we've got really good coverage on that. And I've smushed it down into these veins. So you can tell it's absorbed a lot of that epoxy. It's been pushed down in there just by the sheer volume of what I've put in there. And so pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and uh, fire this up now i'm gonna go ahead and get these boards attached with the c-clamps and we're gonna get her bent up now we're gonna see how much cussing i wound up doing if, if i don't do very much cussing we know things are going well if i'm doing a lot of cussing we know it's gone horribly and so i designed this so is that these can be set directly in line with the end there and then it would make the perfect radius if it was on there so that's that's the idea i just square this end up here Tighten those down. One. Tuck its way right in there. Oh, and you got the the nice smush smush coming out of there.
Now the question is, how well did we do? Let's go take a look. Got nice flat contact all the way down. No gap, no gap, no gap. Everything looks good in there. Extremely pleased with that. Just look at all this squeeze out on here. That's perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for is all that squeeze out. And uh, the, the tape did its job. It prevented the other squeeze out from going, or from prevented the epoxy from going in there. And so I won't have to cut that later. And uh, I should just be able to round cut those corners with the jigsaw now. And I'll do that from the other side. I'll drill a hole through so I can see what I'm working with and where I need to be. And then we'll fill it in from there. But I am incredibly pleased with how this is all coming out. I just could not be happier right now. This is a fantastic job, man. I, I, I am so happy seeing this. I mean, this is so cool. And uh, this, I mean, to, to, to put this into perspective for you guys, this is my first significant woodworking project. Like, I'm, I'm not an expert at this. I've been a welder over the years. I've been a machinist, but uh, I have not ever really been a woodworker. And so for me to go in here and deal with, you know, dead tree carcasses, as uh, Ava would call them, uh, that's that, that's what we're dealing with and so it's it's really cool and the stuff is not very forgiving because like you, know, you can't weld more on the end if you cut it a little bit short so I've had to be really careful and most of this result here is just time and attention so let's go get that uh, excess epoxy cleaned up and get this thing in the heat And just one quick pass over that. I'm I'm incredibly pleased with how that all turned out. I'm feeling really good about it. Well, I just came in and checked on it, and I'm glad I did because uh, it was kind of bubbling up here with the heat on it. So I'm going to stop the heat and uh, just wipe this down and see what happens here. And uh, hopefully, yeah, it's just going to wipe smooth. But it was it was bubbling up because it was getting a little bit warm. So, and I, I could feel it starting to get that gummy texture. So we'll we'll get her wiped down here. And then I'm just going to let her sit in here, and then I'll kick the heat back on a little bit to let her fully cure. All right, guys, it is the next morning, and let's go in and see how this thing turned out. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. Not too bad of an epoxy smell. That, uh, that feels hard. How's our epoxy in the bucket here looking? Hey, that's nice and hard. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Oh, big moment. Let's pull a, the clamps off of here and see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm anxious. It doesn't feel like it started to pop loose at all. I mean, it, it's like all still tied up against there. This board's going to fall as soon as I do this, but let me uh, grab, yeah. I don't know how I can hold this with one hand, and so forgive me if you guys are bouncing around a little bit here. There we go. That didn't stick too bad. Now let's. Oh yeah, that's. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Let me grab that piece that fell down and the guide there. And uh, it appears as though there was no spring back. I mean, that's still tight with the pattern. So that's fantastic. Give me a minute, I'm going to go pull the other side of this off, and then we're going to set this thing up in here. Oh, yeah, here we go. This makes me really happy. That, that turned out phenomenal. I mean, look at that. That That is outstanding. Um, it's still got to get trimmed off at the bottom and at the top to make it the right height. It's, like, way too tall right now. And the door's still got to get cut in the face of it. Um, but I've got plenty of material to work with there. I mean, there was no damage to the edge even from the clamp-up process that I was worried about. So this... This came out incredibly well. I mean, I, I am extremely pleased. And it is tilting out a bit. I'm going to have to go back in and cut that down and, you know, make sure everything's going to fit. And we're going we're gonna to do a process in here of making sure that everything's going to be usable in the space. You know, the, the mock-up's got to happen that way. So, oh, that'll be uh, part of the process today. I'm going to get this door cut out of here. I just printed out a template for this thing. And uh, we'll start getting her trimmed down to size and then getting the bottom trimmed where she fits the contour of the hull but man that just that that just makes me happy right there she looks beautiful that, that is just a beautiful piece of curved bendy wood i'm feeling so good about this it, it just you know i've envisioned it i drew it four years of thinking about this ah god it looks great it, it looks amazing 
Oh, this this is fantastic, man. I, this totally, the thing about this is, is this totally, you know, it makes the bathroom like so much better because I don't have to have a straight sink in here. I don't have to do any weird corners, anything like that. I can just make the thing fit in here. But on top of that, having the ability to bend plywood like this now, anything else that I do, you know, future projects, I can make stuff look really cool by making that plywood bend around. So I'm, I'm all stoked about this. I mean, man, this is, this is fantastic. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Join us on the next episode as we start to get everything cut down and mocked up in place.